Hey, it's Mark Ling here, and in this bit, oh, there's a bit of smoke here, and what in the heck is that? Is that a dragon? It, it is a dragon. Okay, so I was just playing around there, but the world of video making and AI has changed forever. Runway ML has just released version 3 of their model. This is Atomic Games, and this video you're seeing right now was entirely generated using Runway ML. What I mean is this little dragon video here, this was all done using Runway ML version 3. Um, and I'm going to show you how to use it in this particular video, by the way. Um, but I'll show you this, this news background here. That was Runway ML version 3 also. Um, and uh, check this out. Uh, this Atomic Gains title sequence with uh, the New York City skyline. Uh, this is all Runway ML version 3 as well. So today I'm going to show you lots of examples of videos that I've made using Runway ML. I'm going to show you the prompts that I've used, how to write the prompts, um, how to just create videos like these. And you may wish to use these for a lot of use cases, whether it be for video ads, whether it be for concept ideas for stories, whether it be to generate B-roll footage, and a whole lot more. So that's all coming up today. With AI video generation, there are two main types of videos. There are one-shot videos, like this particular example, which was just a simple prompt, which led to this particular video. But then there are also examples where you actually got multiple layers of AI. So an example of that is this one here, where I've got two prompts going on. I've got one where I had the New York City skyline so to speak and I also had the one with the metallic text and I put them on two separate layers one over top of the other so we're going to look at how to do multi layers and also how to do one shot prompts to write a prompt for a video like this I like to use my hot nine AI video descriptors these are the scene for instance in this case it's a dark icy tunnel opening to a vast winter landscape I like to use camera movement. For instance, in this case, it's a slow forward dolly. Uh, camera shots, in this case, it's a long shot transitioning to an extreme long shot. The filming style, in this case, it's cinematic. The depth of field, um, the lighting style, the color and contrast, the movement types. Um, these can all be filled in as well. And then you've got your final reveal. And in this case, it's an expansive, snow-colored terrain opening out into a majestic ice castle with crystalline spires glinting in the soft winter sun. And before you look at this and say, oh, Mark, that's too difficult, I will tell you that simple prompts do work. So you can say things like um, slowly moving in towards planet Earth from space, and you'll get a video like this. Um, but... There's a lot of times when you don't put those extra descriptions in and you find out that uh, you're not quite getting what you're looking for. So if you want to get what you're looking for, the good news is I actually have a spreadsheet for you, which I will link to in the description below so you can access it. So if you want to know, hey, how am I going to fill in those, those blanks and write a prompt like what Mark's doing for the videos that I show you today, um, you can just fill in the blanks and have a look and try out all these different styles here. We've got camera movements, camera shots, angles, filming styles. You could just randomly pick any one of these from each of those and, and, and play around with it um, in Runway ML and see what you come up with for your video. Now, the final reveal part of the prompt, it's only needed if you're actually going to open out into something that's different to where you're starting from. Otherwise, you can delete that part of the prompt. Look at, look at this one here. We're actually starting out zooming in on this town, and now our final reveal is of this Christmas tree, and it's well lit up. In this case, we have a splendidly wrapped gift against a backdrop of a shimmering Christmas tree and a warm, crackling fireplace. We just have our scene. I do not have a final reveal because the scene is the scene. We don't end up going through a tunnel to a final reveal. We don't end up cutting from one camera to another to see a final reveal that shows more. You see it everything right from the start. We just get a little bit closer and closer to it. That's about all. So we just set the scene in this 
kind of case, which is most cases, but um, it can be quite fun to do those final reveals. So that is usually put down there last if I happen to want to have some sort of reveal in my video. There are so many prompt ideas for you to try out. This is a first person view, like POV shot, through open doors to reveal a waterfall in the middle of a living room. Now it's important to keep in mind what the AI is actually trained on in order to make this stuff. Because if you start trying to invent things that the AI probably isn't trained on, like getting um, a shark to go attack a man, <laughs> you're going to get some weird results. <laughs> Look at this. Did you see that guy? And the, all I was trying, I wasn't even trying to get the shark to attack the man in this video. I was literally trying to get a first-person selfie view of a man with a shark approaching, about to, <laughs> about to eat him, just to see what would happen. And that's what I got. So, and then I have to think. Well, actually. This AI probably has never seen that. It probably isn't trained on Jaws the movie and stuff like that. So what's more realistic is this, where we've got a man doing the selfie thing and there just happens to be a shark swimming by in the background. That, that, that the AI can handle. So you, you just got to bear those sort of things in mind when you go ahead and try to generate certain videos. That's why the AI is so good at doing drone style footage. It probably has access to so much drone footage from all sorts of enthusiasts and so forth from around the world that have submitted these to stock photography sites. They may have even paid to purchase it off a lot of people for all I know to train the model. It's why it's very good at doing historical type video footage because it probably has been trained on a lot of historical video footage. And that's what gave me this goose that lays the golden egg of an idea that if it's trained on stock footage, then it's also trained on green screen footage, which means these AI video generators like Runway ML version 3 can produce video footage with a green screen background, which means you can key it out and use it as a separate layer in a multi-layered video. For instance, this wealth style B-roll video that I've created, which is um, showing both drone footage and a silver metallic chrome dollar sign is actually two pieces of footage. I've got one, I've got my, my prompt for um, the first person view, like flying in over a Hawaiian beach um, at golden hour. And then I've also got my prompt for the green screen with the silver chrome metallic dollar sign um, that is um, slowly twisting. The separate prompts, separate generations, one layer layered over the other with the green screen keyed out. Here's another cool thing that you can generate. You can actually generate backgrounds that could be used for your video. So it's just a nice little, in this case it's a blue and pink neon circular thing going on here um, and then now in this case I've got a backdrop which I used mid journey to make the uh, window frames and I put a green screen backdrop and then I used runway ml to make the beach and then I just put one over the other I'll show you how to key out the green in just a second but first let's generate some green screen footage from which to key out and then I'll show you how to key it so what I've got here is a scene, window frames that open out onto a green screen. 4K stock footage, camera movement, none, camera shot, wide angle, filming style stock, depth of field shallow, lighting style warm. It's quite often if I've put none for camera movement, quite frequently it moves the camera anyway, but we won't worry about for this. If it's moving, it's moving. So I'll click generate. Okay, so um, this one here, you can't quite see the full shot there because it's cut off because I've got the prompt over here. but. Um, it is moving, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do the keying of this. So um, I'm going to take this one and download it. And I'm going to be using uh, Wondershare by Filmora um, in terms of how to do the keying. But it's pretty similar if you're using CapCut or um, Adobe Premiere or something else. Um, so let's go take a look. So now I have Wondershare by Filmora. I have my green screen, right? I also put in... A background um, thing that I can now uh, that I generated okay so this is a background this is um, the waves all right so I might um, actually just click on this and enlarge it a little bit in order to make sure it covers the whole screen 
Okay, there we go. So we've got the waves, we've got the green screen backdrop here, which will also, I might just enlarge that though to cover this like that. You could go like that if, and, and make it even bigger if you didn't, if you're wanting it not to have, it might look funny, I guess, with um, that bottom of the thing there, like the deck going on to the waves. I don't know what it'll look like, but it doesn't matter. Let, let, let's just key it out the whole thing, right? I'm, so I'll go to the start. I'm just going to click on it and I go over to video and I click AI tools and I click chroma key and I select the green and I might just cut off that little bit at the start though. Um, so I could go cut, whoops, cut, cut, like that, remove that there, remove that there. And now if I look at this, I have keyed out the background, but you might look and go, but wait a minute, uh, we're zooming out. This is, why is this moving and why is the ocean, uh, you know, the perspective should change because you're moving backwards. Why is the ocean not moving? So that's just as simple as actually just going ahead and going, right, I'll go to that layer where the ocean is. I'll just do a little transformation. So it's going to start there. Um, I just clicked over on this transform tool so that now in the second part of the transformation, I'm just going to make it um, so that it zooms out at least as far as I can get it to, which would be, well, actually, no, I'm going to have to make the other one more zoomed in. It's more it, isn't it? Um, let's see, because I want to make sure it covers the whole screen there. And then at the starting point back here, then we'll make that a bit, bit bigger like that. So that way, when we key it over here, and you may not have seen the keying, so I'm going to click back to this and go to AI Tools and just show you, I'm gonna move this across here, okay? So AI tools is right here, then I click chroma key. So if I turn the chroma key off, it's green, turn it back on, and oh, look at it. For now, I'm just gonna show you what that looks like now. You can see how it's playing out up there, and it's kind of, kind of working quite nicely now. In fact, I just um, paused the video while I generated another dragon. Um, and I'll just move that over. So now this is going to be a dragon. It's going to appear basically at the beach. Wonder what it'll look like. I don't know. But all I'm going to do is chroma key it. And let's see what that looks like. And um, obviously I could put sound effects and stuff like that in there. Like the ocean and even a poof for when that smoke came up. But you get the idea. Um, you know, it's, pre it, it, it's pretty cool. Whoops, and then I got to the end where my green screen footage went actually past the ocean part. Um, that ocean, though, I, I, I did find that I can actually loop that ocean by just doing a little bit of a blend in a dissolve, like once the waves crash and line up, and then that ocean just goes on forever. And um, so that's also possible. But anyway, now you can see the dragon actually sort of walking on the beach, uh, which is quite cool. Um, and like I said, I could feather the edges to get it just right, but I hope that you get the idea. There's just so many use cases for this stuff. For instance, if you had a science-based YouTube channel, you could do something like this, where I generated a chrome silver moon um, emanating from space um, through space clouds and stuff. This is um, orbiting the Earth over the clouds um, with the space in the background and, and the sun in the, in the far distance. And this here is a scientist in a lab with a petri dish. And um, here we've got, um, you know, some broccoli, strawberries and uh, mango being poured into a bowl, like for a health video or something like that. So you're only really limited by your imagination. Here are a bunch more examples of videos that I've just generated today. This is a selfie style shot video of a man outside the Bellagio fountains. Uh, this is a woman walking along the beach. It's shot in slow motion. Look, this is a dinosaur shot sort of National Geographic style. And I'll show you another dinosaur just so you can see this isn't a fluke. Look at this. It's amazing the kind of footage that you can get. This stuff would have been worth thousands or millions or something back 
20, 30 years ago. It's incredible. This is just a stock style image of a businessman just walking through his office. You've got a woman about to go to a cocktail party, walking through um, a a pathway um, surrounded by flowers. Uh, you've got another woman walking through the park wearing a 1960s style jacket with red lipstick. And here we have a bathroom interior for a rich, wealthy bathroom with a mirror and a sink. And I'm about to show you some purple liquid being poured in. I mean, imagine this could be part of an advertisement for a health video but anyway this is uh, footage shot set back in like the year 300 and this is an underwater shot of the coral reef if it was made entirely out of paper and here's an animated self-drawing blueprint that finally reveals the words atomic gains and I'm sure you can come up with more use cases of your own. Remember, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure that you like the video and comment below. Let me know what you liked. Which videos did you like of the ones that I generated? Which ones didn't you like? Perhaps you've got requests for me to try my hand at making certain types of videos. Or maybe you have generated your own videos that you want to either show me or... Um, or you want to put out there as prompts that other people might want to try. So let's start the discussion below. And I think right now, though, you're going to want to check out this video. Uh, actually, no, this video <laughs> over there um, right now uh, because it's highly relevant. And I think that uh, you're going to find great value in that also. All right. Bye for now.